Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. In this episode we'll be taking a look at Big Lots. The first Odd Lots store, which was the chain's original name, opened in 1982. Big Lots history actually goes all the way back to 1967 though, when Saul Shank founded Consolidated Stores Corporation. They started out originally dealing with closeout deals on auto parts and vehicles and things like that. Over time, the variety of merchandise they were dealing with grew, which led to them opening a chain of closeout stores. The location that we're taking a look at in this video did not start its life as a Big Lots. It was originally a pick and save, which in the early 90s they changed their name to McFrugal's, and then in 1997 Big Lots purchased McFrugal's, and by 2002 they had converted them all to Big Lots like this one. Currently, Big Lots has a little over 1,400 locations in the United States. If you're not familiar with Big Lots, their name says exactly what they are. They purchase big lots of unsold merchandise and then sell it at a discount. For example, things like these electric guitar starter kits and little drum sets. This Margaritaville branded stuff looks like it might be some of that junk that they bring in to department stores during the holiday season. You know, seeing a section of this live, laugh, love style decor at a closeout store actually makes me happy because maybe it means people aren't buying it anymore. You know, things that say stuff like, these are the days. Well, apparently these are not the days for Big Lots. Besides getting many requests to do an episode covering Big Lots, the other reason I wanted to cover them is they just recently released some financial results and they're not good. In those financial results that they released in March, they reported a 10.9% decrease in sales for the quarter from the same time last year. They also reported a loss of $210.7 million for the fiscal year ending January 31st. So 2022 was a pretty rough year for Big Lots. While those kind of numbers don't spell doom for Big Lots yet, they're certainly not a good sign. If they're not able to improve things over the next couple of years, Big Lots could be in big trouble. I have to say though, spending some time in this store did not make me super optimistic for them. Besides some sections that were just completely empty of product, there were other areas where there was too much product and it was kind of barfing onto the floor. That's the kind of stuff that I was seeing it Tuesday morning, you know, a year or two before they filed for their bankruptcy recently. Another issue I think they share with Tuesday morning is their business model. I'm not sure how much it makes sense with the way people shop now. I don't think as many people anymore have just the extra time and money to go out looking for random bargains, and when they need something specific like a mouse, I think they just go somewhere that they know is going to have it. I think you can say the same thing for groceries also, I mean, they have them here, but I think when people go grocery shopping, they're looking for specific things, and at Big Lots, you really never know what you're going to find here. I guess one thing you won't find here anymore though is dairy and eggs. I got a good laugh at this cooler case here. They've obviously repurposed it for sports drinks and soda and things like that, and oh, I, I guess there is a little bit of milk down there. But I guess it makes sense that they're not carrying eggs anymore. I, I wouldn't go to Big Lots for eggs, and if I was at Big Lots for something specific, I don't think I'd randomly buy eggs if I saw them here. The grocery section of the store mostly consists of canned foods, prepackaged meals, there's a small frozen section, stuff like that, but there's not really any fresh produce or meat. It's weird how much empty shelf space there is at eye level, but then they've got stuff at the very top where hardly anybody can reach it. They also often have what I consider to be weird food, things like flaming hot Cheetos mac and cheese. That That's weird, right? Overall, the grocery section is nicer here than it is at places like Family Dollar and Dollar General, but it's still not great because the prices here don't seem to be any better than they are at regular grocery stores. It's also kind of weird to be looking at food and then you turn around and you're looking at mattresses and furniture and things like licensed t-shirts. Whenever I see these cheap licensed t-shirts, I always wonder if they are actually officially licensed. I'm, I'm sure they are. Now, I actually thought this Simpsons shirt was kind of cool, but they didn't have it in my size. And also, I don't like white t-shirts. It would have been much cooler if it was in black. Whenever I go into a Big Lots, there's always something that I see that I'm surprised to see there, and on this trip it was these Pokemon cards. Although I noticed the packaging looked kind of weird, and then I realized these are just repackaged used Pokemon cards. I remember seeing stuff like this with baseball cards when I was a kid. It's probably 14 energy cards and one actual Pokemon. I got a good laugh at seeing this FIFA World Cup 2022 stuff here as well. 
Looks like there's lots of crap left over from that. On the other side of that rack, they had some cheap toys like this uh, dig for your own gold thing. I remember seeing these at Target a while back. And supposedly there's real gold. The Targets near me got rid of their cheap toy section and I wonder if this is where a lot of that inventory went. The electronic section at Big Lots is always fun to poke around because they carry weird things like multicolor LED headset stands. Can you really call yourself a gamer if you don't have a multicolor LED headset stand? Oh, and they've got video games. They've got a 161 game mini classic console. I'm sure those games are fantastic. <laughs> when I started to look closer at the prices on things over in this area, things like inexpensive mice and keyboards, I realized that the prices here really aren't cheaper than the prices on cheap electronics at Walmart. And it's certainly less convenient to shop for this kind of stuff here because you don't know if they're actually going to have what you need. I was in the store a few weeks prior to when I filmed this looking for a cheap micro USB cable and they were all out, but sure enough when I was here on this trip they had a ton of them. But you can always count on finding oddball things here like frozen karaoke machines. The toy section seemed to be another area that's being hit pretty hard with inventory issues. There's a lot of empty shelving and then the shelving that is occupied just kind of has products spread out all over it. It's kind of a mess. While I was walking down this aisle, that G.I. Joe logo on that box caught my eye because it's like the old school G.I. Joe logo. And then I noticed it's a Cobra Fang Lego set. However, it's not actually Lego. It's not even Mega Bloks. I've seen these little unlicensed bootleg Lego sets before and I'm pretty sure this is one of those, which is why I questioned those shirts earlier in the video. I did find it kind of interesting that the most organized areas seem to be the seasonal holiday decor sections and then just the home decor stuff in general. These sections almost look like a completely different store from the other areas that we had looked at. Something else that Big Lots is known for is selling furniture, and the whole middle of this store is basically a furniture store. And as a matter of fact, if you look up Big Lots on the internet, a lot of places list it as a furniture store. Furniture actually makes up a large portion of Big Lots sales, and that's something else that they've been hurt by recently. In 2022, their largest furniture supplier, United Furniture, suddenly closed their doors. This left them scrambling looking for new furniture suppliers to fill inventory for one of their biggest selling product categories. It looks like as of now though that situation has been corrected. I don't see any shortage of furniture in this store. Nothing says that it's out of stock or anything like that. Although again I did notice looking at the prices of stuff here that none of this is really any cheaper than what this kind of furniture would cost at other stores. I'm assuming that them selling a lot of furniture has more to do with the financing terms that they offer and less to do with the actual prices. It is kind of overwhelming trying to look at this stuff here because it is very crammed in. I think that may be what I like about Big Lots the least is that it feels like they're trying to cram a Walmart in too small of an area and also it's less organized and has inconsistent inventory. They do have He-Man though, which is weird because I didn't see any other He-Man toys anywhere else in the store, but there's just one randomly sitting over here with that fantastic face over here with the DVDs. I do always make sure to look at the clearance DVDs and Blu-rays because I have seen some amazing stories where people have found randomly brand new Game Boy Advance games over with the DVDs like a few years ago. A few months ago, I found a brand new Xbox 360 game over here that looked interesting and was pretty cheap. It's still sealed up though because I haven't had a chance to check it out yet. Unfortunately on this trip though there weren't any old video games laying around. Besides home furniture and mattresses they also sell patio furniture and I think the prices on some of the stuff over here were some of the worst you know when you compare it to what other stores sell this stuff for. There are similar patio sets at places like Target and Walmart that are cheaper than what they are here. I think it's just like with the home furniture though in this section where the big draw is the fact that they do in-store financing. Now here's another little area that I always enjoy checking out here and that's the as seen on TV type section. They've got the battery daddy over here and they've got the flippity fish cat toy. And they've got the fur daddy. A lot of daddies over here. I don't dislike Big Lots but I don't like it either. It's just a weird store that 
doesn't seem to know what it wants to be anymore. What are your thoughts on Big Lots though? Is Big Lots a store that you shop at regularly? I do come here from time to time looking for specific things, but half the time I leave disappointed because they don't have it. I don't think Big Lots is doomed, but if they don't turn things around in the next couple of years, I do think they could be in big trouble. But that's where we're going to end this episode. As always everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this episode on Big Lots. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and also make sure to follow me at the social media links down there because it's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the Retail Archaeology channel.